Welcome to the Popish Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. Today we are here to talk about St. Lawrence and some other unusual patron saints. Yes, yes. St. Lawrence is one of those early ones, so we have like we don't have a lot of info <laughs> on him. So we, we can't really do like a whole episode because um, there's not a lot that is known, and some of what is known is not necessarily uh, definitive. Yeah. But what we don't know definitively, we put under the broad umbrella of tradition, and it's super cool. It is. So, so what do we know about San Lorenzo? Well, he would have been born in what we now call Spain. Indeed. Okay. Around the year 225. Hmm. And he died in Rome on August 10th, 258. That's pretty specific. Hmm. Yes, yes. Also, not a very long life. That's only uh, 23. It's only, well, no, no, uh, 25, 33 years. Anyway, he was one of seven deacons of Rome under Pope Sixtus II, who disappointingly was neither the 8th Pope nor the 12th Pope. <laughs> yes, because if he was so 6 plus 2, So it was neither addition or, or multiplication. Or 6 times 2, yes, yes. Well, someone should have told him to get on his game. I, Is he Was he the 36th? Cause, no. Because then he could be 6 I, squared. I think he was in the 20s. <laughs> and back in the day, people didn't necessarily assume a papal name, so he could have just been legitimately Sixtus. Mm-hmm. Mm. Anyway, he was probably the youngest of all the deacons, but he was also the archdeacon because he had known Pope Sixtus II from before they were, he was a pope, and he had you know he, he thought he was you know very bright and learned and holy from then, mm-hmm. so he got to be put in charge of stuff. And we know that he was martyred. Unfortunately, Valerian was one of several emperors who decided. I'm pretty sure that all of Rome's problems are caused... By these Christians. By these Christians. Not by, you know, bad policies or population decline. Must be these Christians. Yes. Uh. And so, one of the traditions that it's more likely, because it it was recorded only, like, within a hundred years of his life... Yay! That he was told to turn over the riches of the church to the empire. Mm -hmm. Because, by this point, Pope Sixtus and all the other deacons of Rome... Mm-hmm. So, Lawrence is the last one left. And he was in charge of the deacons. And the deacons, as we learned in Acts, were in charge with providing the needs for the, the widows and, and orphans and stuff. So they had the purse strings. They, they, do, the, they <laughs> do the active daily ministering to the church. Mm-hmm. Which is why even deacons today on their outfits have a sleeve so that they can put their money in their sleeves. But they never do. <laughs> do they have pockets in the sleeves? No, they're just money? sleeves. Good old sleeve wallet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I, okay. Anyway. Well, I mean, a lot of deacons don't even wear their dalmatic all the time, because, you know, it's hot. Yeah. He, he asked for three days to collect this, and in three days' time, he showed up to wherever they, you know, said they were going to, mm-hmm. with all the poor and disabled that the church was helping to care for. Here's the treasure. Yeah. Because these people are the treasures of the church. Now... The Romans, as you might imagine, were not pleased by this. They did not get the joke. (laughs) Because they thought treasure meant, you know, treasure, treasure. Gold, jewels, whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yes. And why we're discussing him today, besides the fact that it's his feast day, is the other less likely tradition of his, that he was martyred on a, a gridiron, which... Which is not a football reference for all those of you who are thinking, wait, wait, they have football? <laughs> it's a yeah. different kind of gridiron. It's an you, actual... You, you, you put the cart before the horse. The football an, gridiron is named after this. Yes. yes. It's an actual grid made of iron. That you then put that you then fire underneath up and, and you know, cook things on. Yeah. Think about your grill at home. Normally they have a lot... They have many more bars going one direction than the other, but still, they do cross at one point and boom, gridiron. Yep. Yes. So... The, the tradition is that as he was being martyred this way, he, he went in, informed the people that were m- martyring him to turn him over because he is done on this side. <laughs> Which is why St. Lawrence is the bestest, the most awesome. Now, the reason why we say that it's less likely is because there is actually a, a very... It, it could very well be that this happened this way, but at the same time there well, is... Well, there's the, two levels of issues. One... It 
if, if you are being killed in this way, the, the smoke and stuff probably makes it so that you're not up to witty, witty batter no matter what. If, if there was some mercy, you would have even lost consciousness by this point. Yeah. Yes. And, and number two is it could there's have been a very, an ancient typo. Yes, there's <laughs> a, there, there are two very uh, commonly used words. Uh, one would be, well, one phrase would be pastus est, which would be just like how passion is, is the, the suffering of our Lord. Pasus is su- to suffer. Mm-hmm. It was often used as a phrase to let other people know that someone was martyred. But you can also take the P off of that, and then you would have the phrase asus est, which would be, he was roasted. So one guy makes a small transcription error, and all of a sudden we've got a really fun, if not entirely accurate, story of Lawrence's martyrdom. Yes, as at that time the clergy were largely um, beheaded for their way of being martyred, hmm. so it, it, it's not, you know, you, a usual way of having it done, but having his head cut off results in no fun stories. Plus, he had shown a lot of cheek yes. in <laughs> making them wait three days and then presenting them with the poor and the disabled. Yes. yes. And so they might have they might have been a little angrier than normal. Mm-hmm. And, and and as Mike said earlier, even though we cannot go and thoroughly vet whether or not this is entirely accurate, it has now reached the level where it is a tradition. And as it does not do anything, as in either case, it would not be contrary to the teachings of the church. We can totally go and hold on to that tradition. And, and, and enjoy that fun little bit of cheek. And we continue to do so. As the main point of this one is the fact that because, according to tradition, he was cooked to death and made a joke about it, he is the patron saint of cooks, chefs, restaurateurs, butchers, comedians, and my favorite, barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> because no one has a better sense of humor <laughs> than the church. Yes, and because while there's a a detailed process that I'll probably list over here of how one becomes a saint, how one becomes a patron saint is, one, you're a saint, two, people decide you're in charge of something. (laughs) Usually usually something about your story or your life really ties back to a particular thing, and then things that are under that umbrella just sort of get scooped in. St. Isidore being the patron saint of the internet, even though he died more than a millennia, more than a millennium before it was invented. Because he wanted to go and, and, and gather up all the knowledge of the world. So we thought it would be fun to share other people who are patron saints of things and why they are the patron things of things. Okay, so who do we got on our list? Well, I, I have an alphabetical list, but Mike has pointed out a few other fun ones. Okay. So there's St. Balthazar of the Three Kings slash Wise Men. Ah, right, right. Um, he's in charge of playing card manufacturers. Because there's a king on it? No, because they thought the three wise men came from what they knew of the three continents of the world. Yeah. The European and Asian and African one. Yeah. He was the African one. So they're like, so he must have been from Egypt. Like all these, you know, gypsies, who we now call either Romney... Romney or Romney Gypsy or Roma, because we know they're not from Egypt. But that's where the word gypsy comes from. Yes. And they were known for their card tricks. So clearly, you know, it it goes together. Very nice. (laughs) (laughs) See, and the great thing about these these is you learn more about the world. (laughs) You've got to know multiple levels of knowledge to put together Balthazar card tricks. Yeah. Who's next? Well, this one's an easy one. Um, St. Benedict. He, he lived in a cave. Okay. So he's the patron of people who explore caves. Spelunkers? Yes. Yep. Nice. <laughs> then there's one that I have to imagine that lots of people qualify for. Uh, St. Bernardo of Siena, who's mm-hmm. in charge of Aberdeen. Yeah, that's Bernardino. Bernardino. Yeah. It's, it's a complicated name. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's very long. <laughs> who's in charge of advertising and public relations because he was good at preaching. Ah! I mean, th- there should be hundreds of patron saints of advertisers for that easily. Well, mm-hmm. sure, but you got you got to pick somebody. Plus, the field isn't that big. A lot of guys are not known for their their preaching, like um, Saint Jean Vianney, great saint. But apparently, you couldn't hear him at like ten foot distance. Oh, he spoke very quietly. Well, that's oh. why he's always in the confessional. Eh. <laughs> I really like this next one though, mm-hmm. Saint Bibiana. Yep, we we remember her every January first, yep. not because it's her feast day, but because she's in charge of hangovers. Hangovers, because <laughs> because. 
the root word for to the word, root word for the Latin word to drink and the root word for Bibiana are, are, are the same to imbibe. Yes. yes. Also, there was a legend that a plant grew over her grave that cured hangovers. We got to get that plant. It, 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 it's gone. Next. Ah, there's St. Clair who's in charge of TV and TV writers. Because she had the vision in her, in, her, in her cell when she couldn't make it to Mass. Yes. Then, St. Columbanus. Why is he the patron saint of motorcyclists? Well, I've heard two answers. One, he was known for multiplying bread and beer. Ah, yeah, yeah. Motorcyclists are known for their love of bread. Well, at least beer. Beer. And, and two, because he roamed around preaching. hey <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, there's one that, you know, we, we know and love of St. Drago. Mm. Ah, the patron saint of those who are hideous. Yes. In coffee houses, because he's a patron saint of those who are hideous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was so ugly that he just walled himself in and lived as an anchorite. Mm-hmm. Poor Drogo. Yeah. <laughs> St. Erasmus, also known as St. Elmo. Mm-hmm. Ooh, as in, like, the fire? Precisely. <sighs> yes, how we're discussing about how he's in charge of, of stomach aches, mm-hmm. colic, and appendicitis. Because he was martyred by having his stomach ripped open and his gut spewed out. <laughs> oh, it's cold, man. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> the, the greatest symbol of God's love <laughs> is our Lord crucified. If you're a Christian and you're not going dark, you're not doing it right. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just, just saying, saying it's, I, it's a little too on the nose, is all I'm saying. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be the the, the the small child complaining about a tummy ache, where you know the answer is, well, at least you weren't, you know, ripped apart. <laughs> <laughs> just tell him to, just tell him to ask Saint Elmo to pray for you. The big Elmo's a saint, saint? not that Elmo. <laughs> now I have the song stuck in my head. Well, well, <laughs> We don't want to spend all, all, welcome. We don't want to spend all day going over all of these. So, are there any other ones that are like really interesting? I am a huge fan of Saint Joseph of Cupertino, who's the patron saint of pilots and flying and astronauts. And astronauts because he was known to levitate in prayer. Then they have to like according to legend, didn't they have to go or tradi- according to tradition? Didn't they have to go and like one time try to tie him down so mm-hmm. that he would not levitate? So he wouldn't just float away. Mm-hmm. I, I also like that um, St. Theodore of Skyron is for and against rain. He has two competing <laughs> ones. Sometimes I'm for it, sometimes I'm against it. And as far as I can tell, the only reason is because he forecasted the emperor's death and, and various other tribulations and stuff happening in time. Well, it, 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 it makes sense to me because sometimes you really want rain and sometimes you really don't want rain. So a good guy to have on your side. Yeah. And then I, I also enjoy St. Julian the Hospitaller uh-huh. being in charge of murderers for that time that he accidentally <laughs> murdered his parents because he was trying to murder what he thought was his adulterous wife and lover. Whoops! <laughs> but now, she let, her, let his parents sleep in their bed. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a Christian retelling of Oedipus. But here's the important thing. He's a little not, less gross. He just y- murdered y- them. Yes. There was nothing else yes. involved. <laughs> but he's not the patron saint like, murderers should pray to him to help them commit their murders. No, no. Once you've already murdered someone, he's a good patron to help you repent. And get right with God again. So he's not a patron saint for potential murders. Correct. He's a, he's a patron saint for repentant. truly murder, truly re- repentant murderers. Yes. If you're going to pray to Saint Julian before you murder someone, <laughs> pray that he will help you change your mind and your heart. Well, let's, let's just be honest. Murder there isn't, bad. There, there isn't. There isn't any. But there isn't any saint that one should be praying to to help them with committing a murder. And then we made them in charge whatever horrible way they died. <laughs> Again. Because Christ died such a horrible death, we all get to live. We're a religion of inversions. Yeah, they right. tore out St. Apollonia's teeth, so she's the patron saint of dentistry. They tore out Lucy's eyes, so she's the patron saint of vision. And children playing with fire. <laughs> and, show, and setting kids' heads on fire. That one's unofficial. <laughs> but, it's but if an we aw- wait long enough, but it could it's be. But it's an awesome tradition. <laughs> 
So go down below <laughs> and share in the comment section your favorite patron <laughs> saint. Maybe maybe they're just maybe they're just one of the regular run of the mill patron saints. Maybe you've got some really fun and interesting ones that we haven't looked into, or at least we haven't mentioned yet. <laughs> so please share that with us. While you're down there, make sure to hit the subscribe button. The bell next to it so you get notified when our next episode comes out. And until next time, remember to live that. Live your faith. Love your faith. Share, Share that, that love. love. Listen, mm. Twitter was all about, you know, how metal Catholics are. And, you know, lots of people wouldn't chimed in with things like this because, well, <laughs> come on. <laughs> so he was barbecued alive? Yes.